What's happening folks? Back with another gaming playthrough, and this is going to be a longer playthrough, though we're going to do it in smaller parts. And we're going to play one of my favorite games of all time, Star Control 2, though we're playing the online open source version, which is called the Earth One Masters. And I forget exactly when this was made available, but I think it was like the mid aughties or something to that effect, which relates in part to a long, complicated legal history of the Star Control series, originally created by Fred Ford and Paul Reich III. And then after the first two games, Activision sort of took over control of it, and they made a third game, which is considered non-canon by major fans and was not supported by the two guys who made the original. But eventually they got the rights to it again, but then when they tried to develop a further game, it got into more legal complications. They're still supposedly working on a true Star Control 3, meaning an actual sequel to this game, not the one that was originally produced by unrelated folks. In any case, uh, it's a starfaring game. It doesn't take place in real time, but it does take place in running time. Uh, and ultimately, I'll, I won't say too much, but the first game, Earth is fighting a battle against this galactic dominating species, which either enslaves or enlists as a battle thrall every species they encounter. And Earth is losing the war, so they send this secret research team off to this planet in a faraway star system in another part of the galaxy, and basically the, the second game starts from the perspective of the research team that's been away from Earth for 20 years, as it turns out. But yeah, ultimately, it's a game that you have to be a diplomat, you engage in star battles, there's a lot of comedy. If anyone's ever played the Mass Effect games, not only have the people who made Mass Effect and wrote a number of the specific important parts, like the people who created the Reapers, they've indicated Star Control 2 was a major influence. There's some references to Star Control 2 in the early Halo games, like in the, the manuals in particular. So it's obviously a game that inspired a number of people who made later very popular sci-fi spacefaring games. So let's get to it. We will put it into full screen. So here we go. This is Star Control 2 in the version of the Urquan Masters. I should mention Urquan Masters, you can use either the original music, which is what we're going to do, but also people who played the game originally, a bunch of Scandinavian producers actually, they made a whole remix suite of all the tracks, and you can actually use that instead, but because I'm going to play it, you know, it's sort of nostalgic, I'm going to play with the original music. Here we go, Star Control 2, the first play of our much longer playlist. I imagine this is going to take dozens of plays, um, or dozens of videos. The first video in our Star Control 2 playthrough. And Frungi will find out what that is later. This first video, we're going to do a couple quick things in the home solar system of Earth which is to say, of soul. Uh, but a lot of it, we're going to talk to this guy who's on a space station above Earth, and that's how you're going to get the backstory of what happened in the first game and what we'll be doing in the second game. Oh, and by the way, at our home headquarters at that star base above Earth, they play acid techno. I'm not even kidding. And this is in the original game, which I think is like 92, maybe 91. like her pixie cut. Yeah, and one of the, I think it's the Halo 2 manual, or maybe in the Halo 1 manual, there's a reference to the precursors. Oh man, I'm so excited to play this. This is seriously an incredible game. It's so well written. And there's so many variant outcomes, not just at the end, but along the way. There's like species you can save, but if you don't go certain places at certain times, you don't save them and they get, they're made extinct. And made cool little Pueblo houses.
discos. Oh. So we threw Johnson in and finished it off. Shout at me. Oh shit, going into hyperspace. Yeah, you can fast travel in this game, go through hyperspace, but they sort of make it like time dilation and that time goes much more quickly as you do that. So, and again, you're always on the clock in this game for multiple reasons, and I won't say more than that for now. Right, did Earth win? Did Earth lose? What happened? Alright, first things first. How do we get over... There we go. This is, oh, it's not S. What button do I hit then? Oh, okay. I'm imagining this to be our ambient excursion starship, essentially. I am Schnoots of the Starship Acid. Alright. I like how I'm consistent in what I've saved over the years. What will we call it? I get it, because they didn't make the full alphabet. I mean, there's like old school games where you have to get a password entering with this system, like a 26 character thing. It's like, yo, what are you doing to me, man? Why? So now, I know the first thing we have to do is go to the Earth's moon. Now, I know this because I have played and beaten this game, but normally you go to Earth first, and the guy there is like, hey man, our star station, oh, I'm not even going to say anything here, I'm not even going to joke. Attention, interloper, heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not the hostile alien is in the back there. The little frog guy is his translator. This drone now leaves to in 
inform the Iroquois of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. So when I was first playing this game, I was like, holy shit, bro. But yeah, ultimately, as I said, that's a drone with a pre-recorded message, but the green hanging alien in the back, that's an Urquan, and that little frog thing is a long story about who they are, and I won't spoil it, but no, you can't sit there, Luca. Luca's trying to mess with the recording here. Okay, so... We do the full scan. That's right. Oh, we have to do a couple things before we go to Earth, as it turns out. Alright, I guess you can sit there, Luca, but don't mess with stuff. She always wants to mess with stuff. Where's my lander? By the way, listen to this music. I remember just like... You know what? I'm gonna have to switch the control by the next time we play, because I have it on the joystick, but that's not really... You know, it's like an eight-direction game, so having this joystick is actually, I think, a hindrance. I want to put it on the D-pad. I don't suppose I can do that here? No, I don't think I can. I can't even pause it while I'm down here. I've got to kill all these little robots. Again, I'm just saving us time because basically if you go to the orbital platform at first, like you're inclined to do, because uh, you can't land on Earth as it turns out. Which, you know, given that message from the Urquan drone, pretty clear Earth lost the war, yeah? But yeah, if you go there, he's like, hey man, we don't even have power, we need you to go get some radioactive elements, and also... Can you go to the moon and check on the station? Because they were supposed to like give us stuff a while back and we haven't heard anything. Oh, I'm sorry. One more little bit of mineral. Oh, I'm full. Alright, never mind. Shout out to Rigby. <laughs> Sounds good, brother. I'm gonna save it because when you go to Mercury, it's a much more intense situation. That does save like that? So yeah, check this out, man. Oh wait, the star map lets me use the D-pad. But yeah, the, I mean, there's just everything to do here. It's such a big game. Game settings, do we have controls? Nope, gotta do that in the main menu. What a nightmare. Well. Between this play and the next play, I'll make sure I can use the D-pad. Which is weird, right? Because in all modern games, you use the, the joysticks, but it feels very weird. Whoa, no, 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 no! Hello! Where are you going? It's like, but the gravity, man! Gravity. Okay, so for real, there's a genuine danger that you can lose your lander on this one. God, like all the... All the planet musics, there's like five or six of them, they're all awesome.
Temperature 165 Celsius, that's no good. Try to land as close to it as I can and see if I can get the fuck off of it. Oh my god, I landed on it. Amazing. Wow. I was like, normally there's like fire. I guess I'll get that. It's like one of the least valuable, whereas there's some some red and some gold over here. I gotta land some more. I gotta get some more. And eventually you can upgrade your lander and all different parts of your ship. Oh man. We're at the beginning of a great journey, I'm telling you. Not to sound like Carl Sagan. get the story of what's going on here. Oh, that's right. When you leave a screen, it points you the way that you're facing. I gotta get some turning jets. You can upgrade your flagship. Make it turn faster and just go faster. We'll look at Earth really quick just to get a sense for what that's like. I don't think Greenland has that much snow left now. But yeah, you can't land on it. Excuse you, game. Yeah, you can't even scan it. It's behind a plasma shield. Attention unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the slave planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar Acid are non-functional. That's all I have to say. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Nah, man. Repeat. Are you the resupply vessel? The starship what? Acid. Never mind, look. We won't last much longer. Here's our situation. According to our oath of fealty to the Urquan, we must maintain the star base, but we have no space vessels of our own, and the shield prevents us from contacting Earth, so we're totally dependent on the Urquan supply vessels for everything we need up here. We know there's a hierarchy base on the surface of the moon, but we can't contact them. The Urquan were supposed to resupply the base at regular five-year intervals, but we haven't received anything in almost eight years. What we don't recycle, we can usually synthesize. But to do so, we need replacement radioactives for our generator energy cores. If you could bring us some radioactive elements, we can fabricate the cores ourselves. Are you willing to help us? You're in luck, my man. We're initiating transfer of radioactives, Captain. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores... There, that's much better. Power ratings are climbing. Life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? Let me ask you two questions. Number one, how long you been listening to Acid Techno? And number two, what's up with those guns, man? You been working out up on the starship? Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Andresynth Space. The Vela star system, yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why are you here? What do you want from us? I want you to pronounce H in the word huge. Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. 
Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years I spent so much of my time struggling, down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive, that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Consider the consequences if you should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station, they'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit the station pants. to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. I'll make can you, you make a, a sandwich? If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. I'll be darned! All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast and we never even guessed! Captain, listen closely. Long-range sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Ilrath, Avenger class. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point-blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. By the fetid breath of the Dark Twin, Kazan. Hey man, I eat cheese, what do you want? Starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone, and learned Which is good for us in the long term. Starship had approached Earth, uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals. Weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armored starship. And therefore in direct violation of the oath of fealty. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery when I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. <laughs> Maybe not that one. Since you will soon be dead, I will gladly explain. We have spent many years gleefully preying on the Pekunk. They are a pitiful, easily killed species. And we would have continued in this divine worship of Dogar and Kazon. But we required additional crew members and repairs to our cloaking device. So we departed the Jiglas constellation and set course for home. But before we had reached our region of space, we detected the passage of a nearby vessel, the Urquan drone. It informed us about you, so here we are. And now, you die! We'll see about that. I'm not gonna use the flagship, we're gonna... <laughs> Captain Tough, alright. I like it. What a beautiful sight, Captain! I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco! I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. If you know so what my I'm last saying, reservation Captain. about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're gonna try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? What a sensible plan, Captain. Let's get to work. Good luck. By the way, Captain, I think we need Bro, a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. Out. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? 
Oh my god, I want to pick it. So the first game has the Alliance of Free Stars. Isn't this the Star Trek one? I feel like that's the Star Trek one. I'm going with the Star Trek one. That has a familiar ring to it. Nonetheless, we'll make it so. The United Federation of Worlds. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the Starbase to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. I have good news to report, Captain. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, we've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Now, you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button. But there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship, to refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this starbase works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. The more minerals you bring us, Captain, the faster we'll be able to tackle the Urquan. So I'm going to go through a whole bunch of conversations with him in the second video, but since this is already at about 25 minutes... Be careful out there, Captain. In fact, more than that, I'm going to quickly go to the... Yeah. We gotta get some turning. I guess we need fuel, first of all. Uh, let's save a little bit for now. No, I guess let's get about, about 50. We need them turning jets, man. Oh, wait. That was a thruster. There we go. Now we're gonna turn a lot better. And then you can buy all, like, you can buy another lander. How much are they? 500? And now I'll just keep the one. But obviously, if the one you have explodes, then you're screwed. Oh, I can go back to the commander. Okay, cool. And then here you can buy different ships. Brew. Oh, wait. Yeah, obviously I can't afford one now. But then when you make alliances with other species and they give you their technology for their ships, you can make all sorts of other ships so then you can custom your 12 escorts in your fleet, so, yeah, like I said, lots ahead of us, I'll make sure to go through some of the dialogue with the Starbase commanders, because he gives you all the details about the first game, how the war ended, and everything, so, in any case, uh, do let me know what you think, and I'll be back for part two soon, let me know what you think, and I will see you next time, peace.